The question is when we deal with the pancreatic mass, is it is a tumor or mass forming pancreatitis. Of course, we all know that pancreatic tumor is the most frequent lesion in the pancreas. About 90% of the solid lesions of the pancreas is a pancreatic tumor. But sometimes we have other lesions and we, we must be able to differentiate from a pancreatic tumor as the management of the other lesions is completely different from pancreatic tumor. The, the, the main pathological characteristic of ductal adenocarcinoma is uh, the serous appearance with a reduction of the vascular network in respect to the normal parenchyma, and so leading to a hypo appearance, hypo dense, hypo echoic, hypo intense, hypo vascular appearance. And the typical appearance is a, a solid lesion uh, when small, uh, badly visible on unannounced CT or MRI, uh, CT, but after contrast agents, it shows. Uh, uh, less enhancement than the normal parenchyma. So this is a typical appearance of a ductal adenocarcinoma. With CT, sometimes we can have some difficulties in seeing this lesion, when especially they are very small, and we know that the MRI is a much better contrast resolution than CT, so we can easily appreciate this patient with jaundice, but with a uh, badly visible mass in the pancreatic head, but with CT we see, you can see the a slight hyperintense lesion, which uh, this is the best image sequence in order to detect uh, pancreatic abnormalities. T1 fat sat, uh, breath hold, we can easily see this hyperintense lesion in the respect of the, in the, in comparison to the rest of the pancreas. So this is uh, the hypo appearance. Uh, sometimes, especially when small, or this tumor can show a late enhancement, so you must be very uh, beware to the, the time of acquisition, because uh, you can, if you are too late, sometimes you, you can miss the, the pancreatic phase and you can miss this tumor. This, this lesion was easily appreciated in the unannounced. And uh, in arterial phase, but in the venous phase, there's homogeneous enhancement. So sometimes it can be quite difficult to see it. But we can see here the obstruction of the main pancreatic duct, which does not reverse us after injection secretin. We'll discuss about this one. Can, this can be a way to, to differentiate uh, uh, neoplastic stenosis from a non-neoplastic stenosis of a virsum duct. The stenosis of the virsum duct can be the only way to suspect a pancreatic cancer when the lesion is very small. This patient had a hyperechoic lesion not clearly visible either on CT or on MRI, but once again we see a stenosis of the virsum duct which does not reverse after injection secretin. So this is a sign, the lack of a duct penetrating sign is is a, a sign of a pancreatic cancer, even if the mass is not visible, although this condition was much better uh, evaluated if the mass was visible. And of course, with the, the tumor, especially in the tail, body tail of the pancreas, so it's a, a late tumor, is visible, sometimes they undergo to necrosis, so we can easily appreciate it. Uh, the why can be an uh, interesting tool in order to see this lesion, which is uh, clearly visible. And uh, DVI can be an interesting tool to differentiate tumor from mass-forming pancreatitis. And then we dis discuss later as a part of the tool we can use in order to make a differential diagnosis. Which differential diagnosis? When we deal with the pancreatic mass, we can have some lesion simulating a chronic pancreatitis, uh, a pancreatic tumor. More specifically, we can have a solid, solid parododan pancreatitis, we can have a, a focal autoimmune pancreatitis, we can have a focal chronic pancreatitis. Why this lesion can simulate a pancreatic cancer? Because as the pancreatic cancer, once again, this lesion, they have a abundant fibrous stroma in chronic pancreatitis in a similar way to ductal adenocarcinoma 
or they can have uh, a segmental widespread of a cellular infiltration, such as in autoimmune pancreatitis. And once again, there's a significant reduction of a macrovascular, not micro, but macro. That means what we can appreciate usually with the contrast analysis CT or contrast analysis MRI. We explore the macrovascular enhancement. Thus, this lesion, once again, they can appear hypo, hypoechoic, hypodense, hypointense, hypovascular, either for ductal carcinoma, autoimmune pancreatitis, chronic pancreatitis, focal chronic pancreatitis. Let's evaluate the single lesions. So what about the mass-forming paraduodenal pancreatitis? Uh, there's a typical clinical profile in these patients. Usually they are middle-aged men, smoke, and with the smoke and alcohol abuse, but I mean, also these men can be affected by pancreatic cancer. Uh, it is uh, an inflammatory pancreatic tissue within the inner world. Uh, smoke and drink, they can stimulate inflammation process in this lesion. Thus, leading to an ampular stenosis and chronic pancreatitis of the whole pancreas. And we can have two variants. The most frequent is a cystic variant by the, characterized by the presence of a multiple cyst, visible cyst, more than one centimeter, and uh, located between the duodenal lumen and the pancreatic head. Or a so-called solid variant, most often they can be small cysts, the micro cystic pattern, we don't appreciate in a, with the imaging. And uh, they is a thickening of the muscular layer of the duodenum, the cysts that are less than one centimeter. And uh, this was a, a, a large analysis of many patients with the paraduodenal pancreatitis, and as you can see, uh, 112 patients, they were mostly male, drinkers, smokers, and the mean age was about 41 years old. So when you think this patient, think about paradoxal pancreatitis, and uh, these are pain, they, they can develop uh, the symptoms of a chronic pancreatitis, so pain, and uh, due to the stenosis of the, of the duodenum, they can have vomiting, weight loss, and jaundice when there is obstruction of the choledocus. And uh, once again, the cystic variant is about 70%, the solid variant is 30%, with uh, there be some pure form only in the groove or diffuse form in most patients. And they can show calcification. So this is uh, a little bit older, older patients, but you can see that by the, 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 the follow-up, this was a benign lesion. The lesion was located between the delirium and the pancreas. As you can see here, in the early phase, of the disease, when the pancreas is unaffected, the pancreas shows a normal signal intensity while the lesion is hypointense. And you see a sharp margin between the pancreas and this lesion. A pancreatic cancer in the groove area usually has uh, infiltrating margins. When you see these sharp margins, think about this lesion. And you can see the calcification as described by the, by the analysis. If untreated, the lesion, soon or later, will lead to chronic obstructive pancreatitis because there is a, a pancreatic outflow impairment. So this lesion develops uh, stenosis of the virsum duct, stenosis of the choledocus, jaundice, chronic pancreatitis, calcification, chronic calcifying pancreatitis. It's only a consequence of the uh, paradoxical pancreatitis. Imaging findings. So this lesion has fibrous tissue. They are high point, intense on T1, poorly enhancement in the pancreatic phase with late enhancement, and typically they are located to the right of the gastrodotonal artery. So if we see this lesion, we see a mass between the duodenum and the pancreas, sharp margins, a small cyst inside, arterial phase, Venus phase, late enhancement, coronal phase in late enhancement, and we can see holes. The small cyst, a sharp margins, it's right to the gastrodotal artery, early hyperenhancing, late enhancement. All the imaging findings we need to make a correct diagnosis. 
However, when we have suspicious, we have to lead the patients to endoscopic ultrasound with a biopsy because it is the only way, as we need to be sure this is not a cancer. But we can drive the gastroenterologist to the correct diagnosis. What about autoimmune pancreatitis? Autoimmune pancreatitis, uh, it's quite new disease. Same age than me, 1961. And uh, they is a EGG4-related disease. We know very well these lesions. Uh, unfortunately, symptoms can uh, simulate uh, pancreatic malignancy. They can, we, can, we can have a pain, weight loss. Uh, uh, sometimes we can have jo uh, jaundice. And we have two types of uh, autoimmune uh, pancreatitis, type 1, which is uh, uh, typical deletion with the elevated GG4. Type 2 is no GG4, is more, uh, that, but the type 1 is the more frequent deletion. And uh, they can present as a, a diffuse or focal. And with uh, diffuse enlargement of the pancreas, the so-called sausage appears, there's no problem, we'll make a correct diagnosis, but the focal mass can simulate uh, a, a pancreatic cancer. The, we can have a long stretch of the pancreas without, remember what, without significant associated, associated dilatation upstream. Uh, and sometimes we also we can have a narrowing of intrapancreatic portion of the condom, common bile duct. There are five criteria we, can, uh, we need to observe in order to make a correct diagnosis. Imaging features, the, there are first level, a second level according to the, sp the specificity of this lesion, the, these uh, conditions. Of course, the increase of GG4 is important to make a correct diagnosis. Other organ involvement is another important clue. In order to make a correct diagnosis, of course, histopathology, histopathology of the pancreas, but not easy to get it. And if we are in doubt, one month of story therapy and see what happens can be a useful tool to make a correct diagnosis. So these are many guidelines and this is the international consensus and you can see we have level one and level two. Level one is a diffuse enlargement, level two is focal enlargement. Level one in ductal imaging is a long, more than one third, without marked upstream dilatation. Level two is a focal narrowing without marking. But the, 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 the absence of a dilatation upstream is an important landmark, even in long or uh, short structures. Uh, what about imaging in MRI? So once again, diffuse or focal enlargement, peripancreatic rim, which is hyperintense in diffuse form, poor enhancement, once again, in early phase, late homogeneous enhancement, rim-like enhancement, restricted diffusion, long or short narrowing without significant dilatation upstream. Some of these lesions are more specific, are less dense, so diffuse is highly specific. Diffuse narrowing of is highly specific. Peripancreatic rim is highly specific. Other are less specific or slightly specific, such as delayed enhancement. So such appearance is not a problem. It's easy to get a diagnosis. Diffuse enlargement, peripancreatic rim, these are typical appearance of diffuse autoimmune pancreatitis. Focal appearance, hyperintense, poor enhancement in early phase, homogeneous late enhancement, this is another quite specific imaging findings. And this patient also has a, a history of customer disease and IgG4, after that we suggest to, to those IgG4 was 1500, so the normal values are up to 140, so highly specific for IgG4 disease. Same patients, long narrowing of the main pancreatic duct without significant dilatation upstream. Young male, abdominal pain, focal mass with the hyperenhancing peripancreatic rim, diffuse dilatation of the diversion duct without significant, with significant uh, uh, dilatation upstream, diffuse stenosis without significant dilatation upstream. Same patients, highly restricted diffusion. DY is a, an important biomarker to differentiate the acute phase and from the post-acute phase and the response to therapy. And the UHC, after one month, the pancreas reverts to almost normal. And even the diffusion 
is normal. What about chronic pancreatitis? Can be some difficult to get to, to, to see a lesion in an otherwise abnormal pancreas because in a chronic pancreatitis the pancreas is, can be larger, the, the can be uh, uh, with calcification, with ductal dilatation, not easy to find. But when we see a mass which displaces the calcification at the periphery, which displaces the ductal at the periphery, we can suspect there is a tumor in pancreatic cancer. We can see here in the axial plane, we can see very well the dilatation ducts are at the periphery of this solid mass. Or is an old case and the patient was sent to the uh, uh, operating room not for pancreatic cancer but for the, the uh, diversion of a virus duct in a chronic pancreatitis and they found a tumor inside and uh, after reviewing the CT it was it can be appreciated because the calcification were displaced at the periphery of these lesions. So can we make a difference in diagnosis? We need to take in uh, uh, mind all these conditions, analysis of the relationship of the mass with the ducts, of the mass with the calcification, location of the deletion for, for paradoidal pancreatitis, extra pancreatic lesions for autoimmune pancreatitis. Keep in mind these findings, we can make a correct differential diagnosis. These are all morphological information. The presence of extra pancreatic lesions, so we think about the immune pancreatitis and the autoimmune pancreatitis can be everywhere. Of course, in the abdomen, look for the kidneys, look at the biliary tree, look for the retroperitoneum. These are the most frequent location in abdominal imaging when you're dealing with autoimmune pancreatitis. So, there are some can help. The enhancement usually is delayed in mass forming pancreatitis, not in pancreatic tumor. The secretin can help to make a difference in diagnosis. DY is less specific, but we can get some information either from dynamic and functional information. And so we have a positive delayed enhancement in this patient. We have a positive delayed enhancement with the focal stenosis of main pancreatic duct, but the positive delayed enhancement, it was, the location was typical, sharp margins, paradoidal pancreatitis. Positive delayed enhancement, the focal stenosis of the main pancreatic duct, and you can see here this mass, loss of laboratory, but you can see in the venous phase, there's a homogeneous enhancement. It was a chronic sclerosine pancreatitis. The lack of a visualization of visum ductal secretin thinks about ductal adenocarcinoma. Poor mass, hyperenhancing, hyperenhancing, stenosis, which does not revert. So the duct penetrating science is an important tool to make a difference in diagnosis. Like this patient, we had a, a autoimmune, a acute pancreatitis, a stenosis of the virus duct is the consequence or the cause of the, of the acute pancreatitis. After secreting, it's normal. It was just what's a consequence of the acute pancreatitis, not the stenosis leading to acute pancreatitis. Uh, so, once again, focal mass, uh, with a uh, peripheral enhancement, but uh, after secretin does not revert, it was a, a pancreatic carcinoma. And when we're dealing with a chronic pancreatitis, when we see a stenosis by the time, which does not revert uh, after secretin, this was a tumor in patients with chronic pancreatitis. So look about for the stenosis. What about DVI? DVI looks like the autoimmune pancreatitis, the ADC map is lower than pancreatic carcinoma, which is lower than the mass forming pancreatitis. There are some values we can help to make differentiate. So some say 0 0.9, 1, or 1.1. Uh, but from 0 to 1, 0 0.9 to 1.1, we can differentiate with the tumor and mass forming pancreatitis. This is according to some authors. However, there are some overlap, so you have to keep in mind all the signs to make a correct diagnosis. This was a tumor, there was a mass forming pancreatitis, same 1.1 and 1.1, difficult to make a correct diagnosis. Perhaps in the future, with the IVIM values, we can have more information, but they still are uh, work in progress. Uh, 
but if Y is a biomarker for autoimmune pancreatitis, the IDC is very restricted in acute phase, but after steroid therapy, it reverts to almost normal. So we can use DVI to, to follow these patients. Before, after therapy, very restricted, almost normal. Oh, missing you. So, in conclusion, we uh, sometimes it can be difficult to make correct diagnosis. 90% of the lesions are pancreatic cancer but we can use clinical, morphological, and factual information, we can make a correct diagnosis in most of the cases. Thank you very much. So now, it's my pleasure to invite Isaac Francis.